So uh, since we, wanted, we want to, to deal with Ezekiel 37, the part about the dry bones, I think we need to talk first of all about uh, who was Ezekiel before we talk about his prophecy. Mm -hmm. And before we talk about who Ezekiel was, we need to talk about what a prophet, what is a prophet, mm -hmm. right? What a prophet is. Um, and, and what is the relationship between a prophet and the prophecy that he is getting? Okay, I mean, is it, is, is it a random thing? Is it a random thing that God basically chooses, God chooses a prophet according to certain standards and criteria? And uh, in spiritual level, and then he's basically giving him the the prophecy that he wants to give. Or is it the case that God has a certain prophecy, and he's choosing a certain specific prophet that corresponds with the prophecy, mm. and that and that's and that way, you know, the prophet himself has an added value. He's he's adding value to the prophecy that he's being that he's delivering to the people. And, and, and the latter is basically the Jewish understanding about, about prophecy and prophets. Well, well, the prophet is an expression of what he's saying. I'm sorry? The prophet is an expression of what it's he's an, saying. Exactly. It's a, he's an expression and he is becoming himself, he is becoming either a fulfillment of the prophecy, either it, we'll see an example from, mm -hmm. from Ezekiel, he's becoming a fulfillment himself, so when he's giving the prophecy, People can really see the way it's being fulfilled in him. Mm -hmm. oh, but also, it might be the case that the prophecy is in order to, to rectify something in the prophet. Mm -hmm. And when he does that, when, he do, when, when he's going through that process of understanding and, and learning something new, through that, he can deliver the prophecy. Exactly. Okay, so, so for example, if, if, if I, for example, if there is a, Let's, let's put prophecy aside for a minute, but let's say if there is um, a, a, a message about uh, music, let's say, okay? A message about music that I'd like to convey to the group. Most likely, I would ask you to do that, okay? You're a musician, it's part from you. You'll be able to bring your, under, your musical understanding and background and knowledge into the message that I want to convey. Mm -hmm. And that way, the message would be conveyed in a much clearer, more convincing, real way tangible manner, right. okay? Uh, um, uh, and, and, uh, so, 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 I mean, each of us has basically a quality, has a gift. Some of us has more. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, but let's say, you know, usually be, oh, oh, it's recorded, I need to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need to be there. He's very helpful. I need, right? I need, I need to be here, I need to be here. Um, uh, Hosea, Hosea would be a perfect, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry? Yeah, yeah. Hosea would be Right. Hosea is right, yeah. Hosea is going through. Right, I mean, Hosea is being given. He becomes the message. He, he becomes, but he's he's been given a, a, a an instruction to marry. A, right. right. I mean, it's. I yeah. mean, well, yeah. exactly. Okay. So and uh, so he's becoming a fulfillment of the message that he wants to convey. Mm -hmm. By the way, same thing happens with uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel twenty four. Do you remember? Ezekiel twenty four verse. Yeah. Uh, Ezekiel 24, verse, I think, 15. Oh, Ezekiel 24. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ezekiel 24, verse 15. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from you the desire of your eyes with one stroke. What is the desire of your eyes? His wife. What's His your wife. Yes. His wife. Yeah. Good. And? Yet you shall neither mourn nor weep, nor shall your tears run down. Sigh in silence. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind your turban on your head, and put your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your lips, and do not eat man's bread of sorrow. Oh, yeah. Go on. So I spoke to the people in the morning, and at evening my wife died. Ooh. And the next morning I did as I was commanded. Now, God is basically saying to Ezekiel, I'm going to, to take away your wife. Mm -hmm. And, and in, Jewish, in Jewish, according to the Jewish law, there are, when, when death takes place, there are seven relatives who should mourn. The seven relatives are a mother and father, mm -hmm. a daughter and son, brother and sister, and, and the partner. 
either husband or wife. So seven relatives are immediately going into a state of mourning. And the state and mourning in Judaism is very, very um, detailed and arranged. And we, we give it room. I mean, we really, really give it room. It's a, very, it's very, it's a, it's a system mm-hmm. of how to mourn. You have seven days of mourning. Uh, you have three days for crying. Cry, take it all, take it all, take it all out. You have three days of uh, eulogies, talking about the dead, describing who he was. Take that all out. And, and then the, the seventh day is Shabbat. And on Shabbat, in being included inside of the seven days of mourning is a day in which you do not mourn. So as you are mourning, you also have a day in which you don't mourn so that you, would, you will learn that mourning is not the purpose. Okay, we focus on life. We don't focus on, on death. And so Shabbat happens to form, fall in the middle rather than at the end? Do, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it's, it, there, it, it's there all the time. I mean, you have a week, so mm-hmm. if that's a, a week from the funeral, the funeral the usually takes... The, could, yeah, sometimes the funeral is on Friday afternoon. You basically take, you, you need to mourn until Shabbat begins. You stop the mourning and all the traditions of mourning, which we can talk about in a minute, uh, for, for Shabbat. Yeah. You continue, once Shabbat leaves, you go back to the morning. But, but say you've just come back from the funeral, Shabbat began, not, uh, you're not allowed to cry. You're not allowed to, you, to give eulogies and to talk about it, not allowed. It's a message that, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a very, very strong and positive message. It, it, it looks a bit, uh, a bit harsh and maybe against human nature, but it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a really, it's a real positive thing. Have you ever been in a situation with a family member or with, with another, like when they're having Shiva with? That's the situation they just come yeah. back from. Yeah, the Every, everybody was. Everybody. I mean, you always had. You know, uh, unfortunately, you know, death is a part of our lives, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 you always experience. You know, you're there, and and in 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 Jewish communities, when somebody is sitting shiva, when he's sitting these days of mourning, so, yes. right? Those seven days of mourning. When we we call it to sit for seven, sit seven days. Mm-hmm. When he's sitting those seven days of mourning. By the way, he's not allowed to do any work. They're not allowed to eat meat. They're not allowed to drink wine during during the seven days. They are on Shabbat. Again, Shabbat is a is a more is included inside of the more the count of seven, but it is not practically. You do not mourn on Shabbat. Mm. You know, right? Okay. So it, it's there, but it's not there. That's the message that you're getting. Um, Shabbat is also the day when we basically hand it over to him. We surrender everything. On Shabbat, we don't create. We don't. It's not about our active actions. So we say, you know, it's all in your hands. You know, we we we're going to rest. Okay. After Shabbat ends, you go back. To, you basically go back or, or or start the morning. In any case, God is saying to Ezekiel, "You, I'm going to take away your wife, and and you will not mourn for your wife. You will you will get up in the morning. You will you will announce that she's dead." And everybody will see that you are not mourning for her. You will, you will wear your turban, you will put sandals, because you, you, we can understand that mourning, the people in mourning, they don't put their, uh, they, 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 they don't change. There's something with clothes, they, they have certain clothes that they wear, they used to go barefooted back in the day, um, um, but so uh, they, they couldn't, uh, the, there was something with 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 with, with haircut and, and, mm-hmm. and shaving etc etc. God is saying to Ezekiel, you are not going to do anything from morning, despite the fact that your your wife died, so that everybody can see can see that and learn something. Mm. Okay, he's becoming a, and when we talk about about his vision of the dry bones, we can say, okay, what is the message that he's basically trying to teach? Mm-hmm. God is trying to teach through Ezekiel, but we see that. The prophet is becoming a vessel <laughs> in God's hands to show, to teach something. And only that, mm-hmm. only that. He is not anything, I mean, he, it's, he's not himself anymore. Okay, we, we, we mentioned uh, uh, Jonah, for instance, right. as a prophet, mm-hmm. as a prophet who ran away from prophecy. Jonah is a counterexample to Ezekiel. Jo- uh, Ezekiel is, be- is part of it, right? He's part of it, he's becoming a fulfillment of it. He's a, he's a perfect screen to, go, uh, uh, to, to get the message uh, conveyed through. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jonah is the counterexample. 
Jonah is anti his prophecy. Okay, in, yeah. in, 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 in his nature. Right. What do you mean? So, uh, uh, what, is the, what is the prophecy that Jonah is receiving? Jonah is receiving prophecy. He's, she's supposed to prophesy a word of, uh, of, uh, of mercy. Mm. A word, of, a, a word of, of, uh, of encouragement to repent. Repentance and asking for forgiveness, that's all about the merciful nature of God. Right. Not his judgmental one. Jonah... By his name, he's Jonah, the son of Amitai. Not sure how it's how it's uh, how it's how it's being translated into English, but uh, in Hebrew, it's he's not Jonah. He's Yona, mm -hmm. Yona, Y O N A, Yona. Yona is a dove in Hebrew. Mm. Okay, Yona is, is a dove. Oh, it's a dove. Now, in the Song of Songs, King Solomon is giving the whole metaphor of my oh my dove in the cleft of, the, the, cleft of the rock, and also 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 like uh, doves, you know that they, they drink the water. Right? There's something about the doves. Uh, uh, there's something with them drinking. The dove is uh, oh my sister, my love, my dove. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. There's something about the bride being a dove. Why a dove? Because doves mate for life. Okay? They found a, they found they find a spouse. Not that I'm an animal person, you know that, but, 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 but so I've heard. Uh, uh, and, and, and doves mate for life. And that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the implication. Okay, the bride should be like a dove, or it is, or it is a dove in God's eyes. It mates for life. It, uh, uh, even though uh, the bride has tendencies to forget, yet it doesn't cancel the, the, the covenant. It doesn't, doesn't rule out the matrimony. And, uh, and Yonah, we have a prophet called Yonah. He mates for life. He is he's faithful to his word, okay? he's standing behind his commitment. Not only that, he is the son of Amitai. His father's name is Amitai. Amit Emet in Hebrew is truth. Amitai is a word, is a name associated. It's the same, it's the same spelling as the word for real, true, faithful. It's Amiti. Amiti, Amitai. Same spelling. So he is a, a Yona, the son of Amitai. There is a lot of truth in this, in this name, in this, in this prophet. He is a man of truth. Truth is associated with God's judgmental character, not his merciful one. Not so much with, I mean, it's more, it's more associated with his judgmental one, because God's judgment, God's righteousness is always right. It's always true. It's always accurate. Not, there is no left or right. I mean, it's just, the thing is what it is. Right. Then there is, of course, the, his merciful character that can change that. And that, that's like the overwrapping. So, but Yonah, the son of Amitai, he is a man of judgment. He is a fulfillment of God's judgmental character. But, and God is, and God, God is giving him specifically to mercy provide a word of mercy, to prophesy a word of mercy over Nineveh, a non-Jewish uh, uh, city, the capital city of Assyria, who, which was the, the biggest enemy of Israel at that time. Okay, crazy situation. But we see here a counterexample to Ezekiel. Ezekiel is a fulfillment. Okay, he's becoming a vessel. Jonah cannot be, it, it, Jonah needs a process. He needs something to, to learn as he's going into this, this prophecy. And at the beginning, he is running away from it. Now, it's just to say something in brackets about Jonah, just, uh, we, usually when we read this, we kind of mock a, a little bit. There is a bit of mocking, you know, uh, at least in Jewish, in Jewish uh, perspective. You know, the prophet who ran away. I mean, don't you know, even my, even my, 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 uh, my, uh, my five-year-old son, he knows that God is everywhere. Okay? There is, there is this song in kindergarten, Hashem Upo, Hashem Usham, God is here, God is there, God is all over the world. He, if you look right, if you look left, and He's uh, above, beneath, He's everywhere. Okay? He, my son, he's, he's five and he knows this. Didn't Jonah know? I mean, running away to Tarshish. By the way, Tarshish, Tarshish, according to the tradition, was a place in Spain. You know, if you think about the geography, Mediterranean Sea, going from Israel to Tarshish was basically crossing all throughout the Mediterranean, which in those days, it was like saying, I'm going to Honolulu. Okay, like I'm going to the other side of the world. I'm going to Australia. Okay, for, uh, for, for Israelis. But like, that's, that, that's running away to Tarshish. That's what it really, that, that, that's what it meant. So we're asking, did, what is this thing about Jonah going to Tarshish? I mean, doesn't he know that God is with him at every single moment? 
jo of course Jonah knew, but Jonah was trying to play the game with, according to God's rules. Jewish prophets, almost all the time, unless there is an exception, like Ezekiel, but like Ezekiel, but but Jewish prophets, uh, they pro they get their prophecies inside of the land of Israel. Okay, that's their, that, 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 these are the circumstances under which they can prophesy. Okay, they need, they need to be here and then they get it. So again, we see the connection between the people and the land. Jonah was trying to, to, to get out of the land as far as he could from the borders of, of Israel so that, he, so that he won't be able to receive the rest of the word. Because at the beginning of Jonah, he says to him, I want to give you a prophecy. Go prophesy over Nineveh. God doesn't say what the word is. Jonah, instead of sitting there waiting to be, he's running away to tell Shish <laughs> before the word is given to him because he's, he knows that he won't be able to prophesy unless he is here. So he's running away in order to leave the borders and then, then the word won't be able to be given to him. That's the, that's the idea behind Jonah doesn't run away from God. I, you need, we need to read it carefully. Jonah is running away from before the Lord. Okay, that's the literal translation. He's running from before the Lord. He's not running from the Lord. Mm. He's running from before. And this expression of before the Lord is an expression used for receiving prophecy. When you stand face before the Lord, you are receiving prophecy. You are prophesying. Um, and Jonah is running away from before the Lord. He's running away from that place of receiving prophecy. Okay? Mm. So, so we see that, that prophets can sometimes be part of the prophecy... They can sometimes be anti-message of the prophecy, like the, the counter example of the prophecy. And when they get it, when they get it, when they take it in, everybody can take it in because they, they you see, it, that's basically the fulfillment. It's another way of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the ultimate prophet for us is Moses. Okay, for, for the Jewish people, Moses is the ultimate prophet. Uh, uh, God says, uh, God says, when when Aaron and, and Miriam. In the book of Numbers, when Aaron and when Miriam is speaking badly about uh, Moses' uh, wife, we need to be careful how we read it. But but Moses, the, the the content of the talk that Miriam had with Aaron was how come uh, Moses had to divorce his wife because of his mission. We are also prophets, you and I, Aaron, you and I, Miriam says. Uh, you, you and I are also prophets, and we didn't have to divorce our partners. We, can, we stayed with our families. How come he needed to? And then God interferes in the conversation, and he's saying to them, come outside. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, he's coming, he, they're sitting in tent of meeting, saying those things, and he's saying, them, let's go out. Let's take it outside, guys. Okay? That's what he's saying to them. <laughs> so he's taking them outside, and, 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 he's, and, and Moses is there as well. And he's saying to Miriam and Aaron, it's, these aren't ordinary people. Aren't the high priest of the nation, his eldest sister, who led all like, the women praising mm. after the split of the Red Sea. Okay, he, he, Miriam was in charge on a well of water which went along with the people. That once Miriam dies in the book of Numbers, the well is gone. She was a righteous, righteous woman, part of the leadership. God is taking them outside and he's saying to them, Moses is not like any other prophet. I speak to him face to face, like a man speaks to his friend. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the conclusion that with all the other prophets we've had, God did not speak face to face. God gave it to them as a, as a vision or in a dream. They, we, uh, 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 the, uh, the other prophets, they went out from themselves and then they received prophecy. It was like a, a what do you call it? Like, like a trance. Like a trance or, or like they were... Like, like, the, like, like they, they were not themselves anymore, mm. okay? And that's how they received it. They had no control over their bodies, right. okay? Uh, but not Moses. Moses was, uh, he was totally in a sane uh, situation, like face to face, like a man speaks to his friend. Like you and I are talking right now, God spoke to Moses, and he was able to reply. Mm. With, with Ezekiel, for example, Ezekiel is, an, is, a, perf is, a, is a good example with Ezekiel, God, he's saying, the hand of the Lord was on me. Mm -hmm. I, there was nothing I could do about it. Okay, God was doing something in me. Ezekiel was not in, in, a, in a, he was not in his senses. He was not conscious uh, as, as he was seeing what he had seen. He, he wasn't in, in, he wasn't awake, let's say. Yes, we call it, I think, an open vision. 
Uh, what? Like an open vision? Yes, it's like we're seeing a vision. But, yeah. Okay. Try. Okay. So you 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 name it. You you understand the, the, the you understand the message. A comment that goes through my mind from our perspective. Mm -hmm. You know when it says Jesus was the Word made flesh. He lived out the very Word, mm -hmm. which is like the prophet doing that. And then it says of Jesus that he was the Spirit of prophecy because he in his whole life expressed what prophecy expresses, which is the heart of God. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just okay. interesting when I'm listening to, mm -hmm. to you talk there. Do you just, can I ask, well, I was, uh, I'll ask it later. <laughs> I've heard just about Moses, I'm kind of fascinated by no, no, we can definitely answer that afterwards. Um, so, the pro so we understand a little bit about what a prophet is. I mean, the way that it's being, an, is the, according to which c c c criteria he will be chosen. And what is the sort of relationship we can find between the prophet and the prophecy that he is receiving. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we can talk a little bit about Ezekiel. So, I who was Ezekiel? Wh what do you know about Ezekiel, about Ezekiel's life? When, when did he live? Where did he live? What was his um, social status? Um, what sort of person was he? I mean, what do we know about him? Um, I'm sure there's probably a lot more that we know than I know, but um, I believe he he was from Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and he was. How do we? How do, how, why do you think that? Or, or why do you because, believe that he because was from I think because he ended up in Babylon, mm -hmm. and so at the time when the when the when the Jews were expelled out of Jerusalem mm -hmm. after the destruction of the temple, mm -hmm. then he went um, He went to Babylon. Mm -hmm. So... Um, he was a contemporary of Jeremiah. Okay, l let's, let's read from Ezekiel 1. That gives a description. Oh, okay. okay. E Ezekiel 1, uh, verse 3. The word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel the priest. Okay. The son of. The son of Buzi. The son of Buzi. Okay, so the son of Buzi, the priest. Mm -hmm. So Ezekiel was a priest. And now, okay. since he was a priest, then first of all we understand his social status. He wasn't right. an ordinary man. Right. The priests were, uh, uh, still are, uh, um, lifted up. I mean, they're uh, they're not they're not ordinary people up until today. Uh, priests, we know who the priests are, we know who the Levi who Levites are, uh, and the priests up until today in, in, in services at the synagogue, there is, a, there is they're one... Not, they're not acting in the role of a priest. I'll, 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 right? I'll, I'll finish my sentence okay. if, you, if, I, if, if I may. <laughs> uh, I, I'm saying that the, the, we know who are priests today. I mean, who comes from the bloodline of priests, uh -huh. okay? So we have people with the name Cohen, we have uh, uh, Kaplan, which reminds of the word chaplain, okay? You know, Kaplan, chaplain, it's a, they, they are also priests. Uh, people with the name, I'm talking about Ashkenazi people, uh, with the name Gross, mm -hmm. Gross, which means big, and, and, Grossman. and Gross, Grossman, um, uh, Kaplansky, uh, all these, all these uh, Katz, is it, these are priests, sorry? No, no, not no that's not no. Okay, so we, we know who, pre I mean, and they know because it goes through, it goes from father to son, from father to son. So a person who is a priest, he knows he's a priest, usually. Mm. Same thing with Levites. Um, so, so up until today, during service, there is one part in service that the, the, the priests of the congregation, or the priests who are there at the synagogue at the time, uh, they would go to the, they would go to the, 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 kind of like the stage, and they would give the Aaronic blessing. The, the priestly blessing uh, to the to the congregation, mm -hmm. and they are the they are the only ones who are allowed to do that. If you don't have a priest, you skip that part in service. So you're saying they're not acting the role of a priest. Well, they don't bring they don't do sacrifices and things like that, but they can still do certain things. When 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 our first son was born, uh, he was the firstborn, the mm -hmm. first fruit of the womb. Uh, there was no uh, no uh, a pregnancy that came before. There were all kinds of, of conditions, mm -hmm. and we had to redeem him from a priest. Uh, okay, there was, mm -hmm. there was a command that basically the, 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 the original plan was that all the first after the, the plague in Egypt of, for the firstborn uh, sons that the, the firstborn children will serve. They will be the chosen ones for God. They were supposed to be the priests and Levites. Mm -hmm. 
uh, after the sin of the golden calf, that changed, and only the tribe of, Le of Levi, they became that, the chosen part of the nation. But, ever, but because of the fact that they were the, the firstborn sons, they were supposed to be those who will serve in the temple, we need to redeem, we need to buy them from the priest. Okay, it costs about 80 shekels. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's that's, describe, describe that's the, the minimum, the minimal uh, uh, price that I had to pay for my for my, <laughs> son, my, my, my kids. Describe what, it, what that looks actually looked like. Uh, it's a it's a really moving, exciting ceremony. You don't get a, you don't get many of them in your home or in the city. You, you decide. You, 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 yeah. you, the minimal way you need, you can do it in is with the with a group of ten, right? Uh -huh. a, a congregation, a minyan, right? Mm -hmm. right? That's the minimum, but you could also do it. Uh, you can also do. I mean, we did a big party. I mean, we we you know, we like parties, so we like you know, we, it was big. We had about hundred people uh, with a, with a, with a big meal for everybody, and and we brought a, a we had a priest who came. Uh, someone you knew. Some someone we knew, a friend yeah. of a friend of my in laws, mm -hmm. uh, and he he knows the he knows the ritual, so he really right. knows how it's done. Right. He also has um, he has uh, um, old uh, shekel coins. Not the shekel that we have today, but like old shekel kind, of like like old ones. They they run they ran through the family. Mm. I don't know how many generations. Uh, they have the worth of the old shekel because we need to we, we need to have five five of those. Right. It costs about eighty shekels in in our, in our days. And you basically what I what I did was I gave him eighty shekels. I bought those five coins uh, f from him, and then I could. Pay him those five coins and get my son. And, and he, <laughs> no, so so he's yeah, there holding my son, okay, yeah. holding my son, and and, 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 I, and I'm coming I'm coming at him and I say um, I would I I need to redeem my son, and then he said no I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> he was did funny. he do that? Yeah yeah he did. Oh, he did that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did. He was uh, he, I think when he did it he was about eighty five. He he died. He is not alive anymore. He was about eighty five when he did. It. He lovely man, lovely man. Mm -hmm. A lot of humor, yeah, and, yeah. But, but 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 really like a, a man of God. Really, you mm -hmm. could see by the face, you know, his face shone in a way. So I was really happy that he was the one. In any case, he was holding my son, and I basically uh, there was a little prayer that we said that we do this in memory of our traditions. Da, 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 and we're waiting to be able to do it in the temple. Da, da, da. I pay him the the coins. I get my son back. Off he jolly well goes. <laughs> <laughs> with, with your money. So when, uh, no, I I bought the coins from him, the five coins. I, I had to, so so they became mine, and then I paid with the old coin, like with those. With old, old but you could also do it with, with simply eighty shekels. He just said, like I have the I have something close to the original. Why don't you do it like it's that? Kind of a fine. symbolic thing. That's yeah, it's a good. symbolic thing. Yeah. Yeah. So he still got the eighty shekels. No, he he's got now. the coins back. He, he no, he got the coins back. back. I, I gave him the 80 shekels in order to buy the coins, and, and then I paid him with the coins. But so, he still have the 80 shekels. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he has to, he has to get it. He has to have it. Um, that's the whole thing about me so buying the... the point the, of redeeming your son? What, what is the point of all that? Like, what, I'm, what I'm basically point? redeeming him. I'm letting him... I'm, I'm taking him free, basically, to be home. And not being not and because he was supposed yeah he was oh, supposed okay. to he was supposed to work with the priest so, like Samuel like Samuel exactly, yeah. exactly. so he, if you didn't redeem him he would have to go and become a priest and not well there isn't a practical side of that today because there is no temple okay. so he, he won't just be able to he I won't want there, to take he, him <laughs> yeah. he won't have uh, he won't have a place to be so it, there isn't a practical side if we don't do it no. but we still do it because we do tradition. as much as we can it's not even a tradition it's a command. You have to redeem your son. You have to. It's 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 said it's, it says expli explicitly in, in, in Exodus. Yeah. So we we do we, we, we do everything we can. Okay. I mean, but but if let's say I didn't do it, there isn't any practicality of him. He would still be home, and I would have to feed him at night. It's not like. If you had a daughter, <laughs> if you had a daughter, first daughter, daughter or just Sorry? the first. Son? No, just the firstborn okay. son. Okay. Just the firstborn son. You do the same thing, by the way, with uh, um, uh, donkeys. Donkeys, animals, livestock, you do the same thing. We can read it from Exodus, I can tell you where it is. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. Redeem your donkey. In any case, uh, no, it's basically to, to redeem the first fruit of the womb. Yes. That's, the whole thing is that you realize that all the, like the first fruit goes to him. You it's surrender. Bit, it's a little bit like tithing. I mean, it's, it's like it's tithing. tithing, yes, yeah. yes, it's like tithing. And it's also, it's, it's a strong message for, for me as a father your kids are not really, really yours yeah, yeah. in the end. Okay? And, 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 and that's what we say to our kids. I mean, you have 
a you have an earthy you have earthy parents, but you also have a a, a father who is above your parents and. And, and the Jewish law states that if a father says to his son, because we have to respect our mother and father fully, unless they tell you to break the law. Say you have a father who says to his son, don't keep Shabbat, his son is not committed to listen to his father. He can, he can break his father's word and be true, true for his real father. Yeah. And, and we say to the, we, and our, kid, our, our children grow, grow up knowing that the real father is, isn't me. Okay? The real parent is not one of us, me or Leah. It's God. Um, so when they don't want to do as we say, <laughs> you're, not my, you're not my real father. <laughs> God didn't say I can't go to sleep at 8 o'clock or at 10 o'clock or something like that. Um, so you have to be careful of what you say. Right? So Ezekiel 37. Okay, so okay. we understand. So the fact that Ezekiel was a priest already says something, especially because of the the the, the, the features of the vision. Where is Ezekiel actually? Where is he? He's in a valley mm -hmm. with bones, which we could say that he is in a cemetery. Well, and and the, and the other question about it though is, was he in a? Was he That's the question. Way? That's is the question. It, is this a Can vision? it be the case? Because priests are not allowed to go near the dead people. Right, right, right. right. They're not allowed to be impure. Be, uh, like to, 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 they get impure, then they can't serve. They, they, they are being ruled out from, uh, from uh, uh, their priestly work. It's like, That's that, like the vision, like the story that you sure told about the Good Samaritan. Exactly. Yeah, the that. story about the Good Samaritan, not that I, not that I, I mean, I'm sure you can, you can tell much more in detail, much more accurately than I can, but the story about the Good Samaritan, as I understand, as you told me, is, uh, is uh, a, a, man, a, a man in need is walking on the way to Jerusalem. And that's, robbed. Sorry? He's robbed. He's in, yeah, he's robbed, or in, right? He's robbed and he's basically in need and he's going uh, in, on his way to Jerusalem. It was in the area of Jericho. Mm -hmm. And there is, by, until today, there is a place called the Good Samaritan, yes. uh, right there. And um, it's a place for hospitality and things like that. Mm. In any case, uh, so the man is in need. He's, I think he's lying on the ground yeah, or something? Yeah, he's beaten up. He's beaten up, lying left. on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Now, you have a Levite and a priest passing by, and they don't go to help him. They don't help him. Mm. Now, it looks like they, they're not helping him because they don't care. Right? Or maybe they don't care. And then, and, then a, and then an ordinary Samaritan person comes and he helps him. And then it, the message is probably you know, how the grassroots can, uh, uh, can make the change and, and, and you don't need to be way high up in order to, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, in order to experience and to be the fulfillment of God's word. You can do it from, from, from where you are, the grassroots here. Take a, take, for example, take a look at the Good Samaritan. The priest and the Levite didn't help him. They didn't care. But it's not about them not caring. It's not about that they don't care. The way I understand it with my Jewish perspective, a, a Levite and a priest cannot be anywhere near the dead. And if he was lying on the ground, not moving, they, would, they were afraid to become impure at that point. Mm -hmm. And they might have been on their way to serve mm -hmm. in the temple. So, uh, so, uh, so they need to prioritize their, they need to prioritize their commitments right now. They, they're on their way to serve, on their way to Jerusalem. They do not want to get impure because then they would have to go through a purification process and to leave the camp and stay uh, for a certain amount of time and then do the red heifer thing and deep yourself in mikveh da, 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 oh, until they're able to go back and serve. Now, there were many, many priests and Levites. They had rotations. They had turns. Maybe they were on their turn, and if now he'll, he'll, be, he'll be unclean in order to serve, he will have to wait another year before he does his job in the temple. That, I'm, tr I'm trying to, to get into their Jewish head and to understand what was going on there. Mm -hmm. and, then the good Samaritan, and then the Samaritan person comes, he has nothing to lose. I mean, he can help him, so he does it, and he should. Now, is, am I saying that they shouldn't have helped him because they needed to go to... That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that. Okay, of course they had to help him, but it's just that there is a reason for them to prioritize their values like that. It's not that they, it's not like they didn't care. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not about not caring. I mean, I mean, this nation is, has a lot of mutual guarantee in society, a lot. Okay, but they, 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 um, they've, uh, how do you call it? they prioritized 
-hmm. their their commitment wrongly. That's that's what's behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I suppose I mean the whole point of this of the story that she were told was that um, you know who is my who is my neighbour who look like. So at the end of the story, Yeshua mm -hmm. asks, so who you know who was the neighbour to the to the man who was beaten up. Okay. Um, so, Ezekiel 37, you asked the question, it's a very important question all throughout the text. Is this a real thing or is this a vision? Mm -hmm. Okay, is it a real thing? Is it a vision? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there, and of course, there isn't one answer, it's Judaism. Okay, there are always, <laughs> that, uh, uh, really, I mean, when you study scriptures, you never find one. A one answer that everybody is everybody agrees on. I mean, you never find when there's a question, you know, you have this approach, and then they need to support their understanding with 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 places, other places in in the text. They have to support it. They argue. They throw objects at each other. In the end, there is a there, there, there is a decision. Let's say <laughs> now a minority a minority opinion a minority a minority opinion which is not accepted by the vast majority. A minority opinion is that this is a real vision. It's a real vision, and what do you mean a real vision? it's a it's it's a it's a real event. Okay. That it's not just a vision; it was a real thing. Right. And then, uh, 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 and then, of course, the other I mean, the vast majority is asking, "What do you mean a real thing? He was a priest. How can God place a priest in a cemetery? It it's like uh, it, it 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 doesn't make any sense. It, it it's it's going against God's word. I mean, he." He would not have placed a that. That's therefore it is just a vision, right. but it's not a physical thing. Mm -hmm. So the the minority says no. It is a real thing because Ezekiel is saying in verse two. What is he mm -hmm. saying? Then he caused me to pass by them all around. Mm, no, no, no. It's not that he caused me to pass by. He tra He. Uh, he passed me around. I mean, he was holding me, he took me, and he took me, and he did this with me. I mean, he he basically lift. He, he's lifting me, yeah, yeah. and he's making me see all the bones all over the valley. Right. I'm not touching the bones. I'm not part of the cemetery. I'm inside the borders of of the valley, mm -hmm. but I'm not touching the ground. God is holding me, and he is doing this with me. He's passing me all over it. It's not like he's causing me to pass and I'm walking with my feet, mm -hmm. with my legs. No. He is holding me and doing it for me. That's what the minority says. Right. Okay. And, but, the, mm -hmm. but, the, but the majority says, no, it can't, it can't be the case. He's still in the, in the borders of the cemetery. It has to be a vision, a, 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 just a vision, not, right. not a physical yeah. thing. Right. Okay. And they argue, like, and, and all throughout the text, we'll see these two opinions come and... Mm. Okay, go against one another mm -hmm. with understanding. Okay, so again, verse one. Sorry. Okay. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was it brought me out from where. Right. It brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. We said that so before. So I must have been somewhere, and God bring like. Before. What does it mean? He brought me. Brought me out of, of myself. Oh, okay. okay, he brought me out. The spirit, the hand of the, the Lord was of the on me. It was in. It was a forcement. He was forced. He, he didn't have a choice. It's not like he was. God, I'm a vessel. Give me your. Sh show me your face. Give me your heart, Lord. Uh, it's not that. He didn't sing Ruach Hakodesh boy. Okay, and the Holy, <laughs> Holy Spirit come. No, he, no, the hand of the Lord was on me. On me. It was. It's. Uh, we have to realize that. Um, I know that also in Jewish circles there is a, there's a tendency to think about it in a very dr a romantic way. Right. The hand of the Lord, something that stro see, strokes, mm -hmm. strokes, mm -hmm. yeah, something that strokes you. It's it fills you. It's, we see a great light. It's a forcement. It's not an easy situation. An it's an enforcement. Okay, I mean God is forcing Himself on the prophet. Mm. Okay, it's um, it's not always right. not always a, uh, a a it's not like the prophet asked for it. Right. Okay, and uh, I I would like to we talked about it during the break, but we have to remember that when the people uh, when they heard when they saw the voices in Mount Sinai, they basically there there were millions of people prophesying at that point. They said to Moses, they ran away from that prophecy, and they said to Moses. God will speak to you, and you speak to us. We can't take it. We can't take it. 
Mm. Okay, it's, it wasn't an easy experience to go through. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, the hand of the Lord was on me, and then He brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord. Basically, He brought me out of myself. I was out of my senses. And He placed and me... And set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Okay. Is it in the midst of... Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it was full of bones. Mm -hmm. Question. Whose bones? Whose bones? Whose bones were they? Like Good. Whose bones? What else? Um, how long had they been there? Were they like... Well, he hadn't told us. He's going to tell us they were very dry, but... Mm -hmm. uh, Why bones? Why bones? Why not dead bodies? Uh. I mean, why bones? It's, it has to be specific. I mean, it has to be. Everything has a reason. It's God. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a human narrator. Okay. It's not a, a script writer. You know. It, there has to be a reason. It's not just because it fits. It's not just because it makes a nice sound for somebody to write music to. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's. A, 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 it, there has to be a reason for a bone. Okay. It's been there a long time. Been it's been so it's been there a long time. But the bone represents a body at some point. Well, it represents a body, and another thing is that a bone in Hebrew is the word etzim. Mm. Etzim, the same word, is also the word to talk about self. Mm. Self. All the self thing, if I want to say myself, mm. I would say atzmi. Also saying my bone. Bone and self is the same word. Mm. The, 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 the valley was full of selves. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's the same. Is it, we take it to that point, And then we ask whose bones were they? Right. right? And, then we, and then there is a tradition that says that these were the bones. It's a tradition. Okay? It, 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 comes, it, it gets it, its reference from something written in Chronicles. And, it, and the, the tradition says, the understanding says that these were the bones... Of, of people who left Egypt hundreds of years, uh, uh, more even, a thousand years before this, they had left Egypt before it was time to be redeemed. They yes. escaped Egypt. They escaped Egypt. They, they, were, they were the self. They thought about their own good without, they took themselves out from the over, uh, with the overall account of the nation. Mm. They, they didn't understand that the nation is going through a birth process at the moment, as a nation. But they saw the self. They were bones. Self, bones, same word. Yeah. And so they left, they ended up getting to, uh, to uh, Babylon, and basically God caused, the, uh, God caused them to die because of their selfness. Mm -hmm. And the valley was, pull, was full of bones, which is also full of self. Okay, the in individual mm -hmm. thinking as opposed to plural, uh, mm -hmm. uh, corporate thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, who's, so that it gives us a hint. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's okay. read again verse 1 and then do the verse 2. <laughs> okay, the hand of the Lord came upon me. It might take a few, a few days. I don't think you have enough battery for that, by the way. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I see. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. I have another one. I have two. <laughs> two. That way. Yeah. Okay. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed, they were very dry. Okay. So there is a there is a there is an effect <coughs> of you know it's it's like Elijah. What did Elijah do to increase the effect of the, of the miracle on Mount Carmel? He poured water on the sacrifice. He poured water on the woods in and, the, and, drought, and the sacrifice so. in a time of drought, crazy thing to do. And then he needed to light it, mm -hmm. right? So how would you light something which is so, so wet? And he basically did it in order to increase the effect. So the, so the, the valley was full, 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 full of bones, of selves, mm -hmm. okay? And, then, and they were very, very dry. He says, right. okay, he doesn't say that they were dry, they were very dry. He doesn't leave any room for question. Does, yeah. that, does that indicate that they've been there for... They've been there for a long, 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 time. For a long, long time. Okay, it's, it, indicates, it indicates many... Uh, and also the fact that 
it, it, makes, it makes the viewer uh, be a lot more skeptical that this can actually happen. Mm -hmm. And when it does happen, it makes him be much more convinced that it's God's hand mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. than, 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 what, than the way he, he understands. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm stumbling my tongue. <laughs> okay. Um, and, he's, and, he's, okay. and he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, Oh Lord God, you know. Okay. So now there is something about the bones coming to life. We, are just, we start to begin to have a picture of what the vision is about. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you, what is the vision about? What do you think this vision is about? Um, in terms of looking at it in the big picture and now? And in terms of you read about it, yes. what sort of understanding do you think this has? Because we have to, re I, mean, I, mean, we, I mean, this was included in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. when, when our sages basically sat down to edit uh, to create this book called the Bible, they had to decide, okay, what goes in, what goes out? I mean, what do we include, what do we not include? In terms of, in terms of prophecies, and, mm -hmm. and, and like, not, not in terms of Torah, but in terms of prophets. Okay, we've had a lot, we have, we've had many prophets. Some of them didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't go in. We have what we call, there is, a, there is an, a, an, a, an extension to the Jewish Bible called the external books. Okay, uh, books like uh, Hanoch, Hanoch, or, or mm -hmm. if you know, Enoch. sorry, Enoch. Enoch. Okay, mm -hmm. Hanoch. Uh, um, uh, books like that, which are external to the Bible, they were not edited into. Uh, uh, simply, be, not simple, nothing simple, but but because of the <laughs> understanding, we have to be careful with the words we choose. Uh, because of the understanding that, that that anything being anything included in 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 the Bible should be relevant for all generations. Not just for the specific time when it was given. Right. It needs to be relevant for all generations. Otherwise, it's becoming a history book. Mm -hmm. Something that happened in the past, the message which was given in the past, and the retribution which happened in the past, and the behavior of the people in the past, and it's all about the past, and we can have a biblical museum, and it's all belong, it all belongs to the past. Right. But the Bible is about the present, Therefore, it's also about the future, mm -hmm. because tomorrow's because tomorrow is 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 the present of it's going to be the present as right, well. Right, right. So it, it has to be relevant at all times. <coughs> so so this vision is relevant all throughout the generations. Right. So what is the vision about? Well, I think it's a. I mean, I see it as a as a constant um, word to the Jewish people. I mean, they were in they were in exile when he sees this. Mm -hmm. So this whole sense of, you know, in verse, um, uh, I, will, I will bring you back to the land of Israel. I mean, that, that in itself, it's, it's, it's God. Basically, I think, it's like he's saying, don't feel like this is the end. It's not. There's, I, have, I have a purpose. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take these dry, bands, these dry bones of yours. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cover you with it's like re totally renewing you from the beginning mm -hmm. and I'm gonna put like breath in you you're going to you're going to live again mm -hmm. you're going to um, you know you're so it's a word of comfort totally encouragement yes which corresponds with Ezekiel 24 God is using Ezekiel taking away his wife takes away his wife and saying to him do not mourn Okay, now he do, God doesn't say, God, uh, now, uh, when Ezekiel is telling the story, God doesn't say to Ezekiel, at the beginning, I'm taking away your wife. What does he say? The desire of your eyes. Of your eyes. Is, is, there an, is that an expression? In, no, really. It's, yeah. it's, like, it's like the apple of your eye. Yes. It's like I'm taking the apple of your eye. Basically, the, you, the most precious thing that you have, the most precious thing, we talked about the three-piece puzzle. Mm. One of the most precious things that we have as a people is this land. Right. It's very, very important. That's, that, that's home. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel is a metaphor of the people. His wife is a metaphor to the, to the land. God is taking away the land. Okay, He's taking away Ezekiel's wife. And he's saying to Ezekiel, slash the people, do not mourn. Mm -hmm. Don't mourn. Don't, be, don't see. Don't, don't just look at things and say, okay, that's what I'm looking at. See beyond. Right. You have to be able to see beyond what, 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 is, given, what is given to you. Right. 
and, and that's by the way that it, that's that's the way we need to study scriptures in general, especially especially Torah, mm-hmm. because sometimes you know you read about one thing, you read about uh, you know a certain command being given or situation, and you kind of analyze it according to your subjective uh, analytical tools that you mm-hmm. have inside, mm-hmm. but but really the situation is different. It's really different. I mean, let's take an example. Just, just as an example, in the book of Numbers, okay, let's see that. Okay, let's go to the book of Numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, keep Ezekiel, because we're coming back to it. Okay, I think it's uh, chapter 12. But let me see. No, it's not 12. Wait. Here. Um, what is it? 15. 15. 15, uh, 15, verse 32. 15, 32? Mm-hmm. Yeah, please. Now, while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. And those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. They put him under guard because it had not been explained what should be done to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, the man must surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. Mm-hmm. So, as the Lord commanded Moses, all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him with stones. Okay. Looks like we have a sinner, right? Mm-hmm. We have a sinner in the camp. The guy goes. Uh, we, the guy goes on Shabbat and he's collecting sick. He's basically violating Shabbat. You're not allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, in order to set fire, which is the war, like worst prohibition that we have on Shabbat, setting fire is explicitly said, you mustn't set fire on Shabbat in all your dwelling places. So he is clearly going to do that. They find him, they bring him to Moses, and, and surprisingly enough, Moses doesn't know what to do with him. Mm-hmm. Moses, who was trained by God for 40 days and 40 nights, Received everything from the spirit. He did not know what to do with him mm-hmm. Okay, the, the, there is another case that it happened uh, later on. We don't have to go into that But there are three cases basically all throughout Torah that Moses doesn't know what to do Okay, he, the spirit was taken from him. It, 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 it was required for God to give the law in that sense mm-hmm. So that everybody can see that directly 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 from God in any in anyhow uh, uh, it looks like we have a sinner in the camp. We, uh, and, you know, we kind of go, you know, how could he done it? How could he do it? Violating the world, the world so publicly. Didn't, hasn't he learned anything? Ta, 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 all these negative things. But the truth is that if you really look at it carefully and you, and you compare it with other places in, in with another place in, in Torah, we see that it might be the case that this guy is actually a righteous person. He's righteous not a sinner. Why? Because this comes right after the sin of the spies. Right? The beginning of the portion that this one is included in, we have the sin of the spies. The spies come back and they say it's a bad land, we won't be able to take it. You know, there are giants there, it's eating, it. it's a land eating its inhabitants. Uh, 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 we've seen all those Amalekites, worse things. People say, oh, what have we done? Let's go back to Egypt now, okay? Let's, let's go back. And, they, and then God says, after that, God says, I've had enough. This generation will not be the one entering into the land of Israel. This happened on the second, day, uh, the second year in the desert, okay, out of 40. This, this generation will not go into the land. I will, it's the next generation which will come. We have, to, we have to reset everything. Okay, so we have to wait until all these wait. But we have to wait for them to die. And that's when basically they understand that they're going to be marching in the desert for quite a long time. Okay, and, and all the children who were born from that point, they knew that in order for them to finish the journey, their father has to die. Right. Okay, now, uh, after this punishment was given, we can imagine, and it, and it corresponds very nicely with Ezekiel, we'll see it in a minute, we can imagine that the talk which came, which, which began to take place in the camp was, why should we bother keeping anything? Why should we bother? We're going to die in any case in the wilderness. We may as well do as we wish, 
and uh, and you know God takes us whenever He takes us. It, prob and they might have also they might have thought also it might be the case that the word is now irrelevant. All these things that Moses is teaching us every day irrelevant from now on because we're all going to die in, in, in the desert. It's not like he's training us to 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 become. Uh, to become worthy to enter into the land because we're not entering into the land okay and that's and, and when when the when this person who by the way doesn't have a name mm. it's, it's very important he doesn't have a name people who people without names it's a it's a warning okay it's not a warning it's it's a it's a red light why doesn't this guy have a name it's very important in torah names are very important in torah it, it's important how Adam named all the living creatures. We, we did that last night. Mm -hmm. Only two of you were here, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, um, <laughs> so they know, so they know. But names are really important. The names that Adam is giving his children, the names that Cain is giving his children, the names that Shet, Adam's third son, is giving his children. And you see that there is movement in those names. Mm. Cain, all the, all the children of Cain, it, 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 they talk about... A moral uh, decline. decline, moral decline. Mm -hmm. All the names that Shet, his brother, is giving his children shows about moral Same. ascent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You knew that was coming. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, okay, so there is movement in the names. Okay, names are important. Since the guy doesn't have a name, it says something. It it makes us go into the story a little bit more and compare the text with other places. Mm -hmm. In any case, this guy, look, he sees that people are beginning to talk about how the word is irrelevant from now on, and he's making himself a sacrifice. He's deliberately going to outside of the camp and collecting sticks on Shabbat because he knows he will be punished, and, 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 he, and he wants to save the camp from complete annihilation. Mm. So, so, so they capture him, and God says, stone him. He's making himself a sacrifice. You could also see it like that. Wow. So be, we need to be careful of not, let's not eat what is on the plate as it is. Let's try to, 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 to see what's inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try to see what's inside. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to Ezekiel. Um, it's, a, it's an example. It's a, it, you see, I, I, know that it, I know that it might look... Like this guy has ADD. I mean, he's going all over the place. But but that's the way that's the way we study Torah. Right. We don't just take a text and we focus on the text because it's it's one big 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 organism, and we have to be able to compare things, right? We have to be able to compare the words there, the words the, the words there. Uh, what sort of example can I get from? What sort of evidence can I see from Torah? Because Torah, the first five books, that's the foundation of Ezekiel. Without Torah, we can't understand Ezekiel. We can't. There's no, because, we need to under, if, because Ezekiel is a priest. We have to understand what a priest is. So we have to go back to Torah for that. What are the laws involved with priests? So, how, so was his vision real or, or just a vision? Or was it a, was it a vision? Was it a physical thing? It brings all kinds, yeah. of, all kinds of questions. Okay? We can't do it without Torah. For us in any case. So, um, where were we? So he said to me in verse uh, verse three. Uh, three. Yeah, son, he, son of man. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Mm -hmm. So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Okay, and, and Ezekiel is using both names, mm. right? He's using both names, Lord God. Right. He doesn't he doesn't just say Lord. He doesn't say God. When the, when we find these two names coming together, it's a sign for um, balanced pure, righteous leadership of God. It's the perfect balance between His judgment and His mercy. It's not just the Lord, it's not just mercy where everything is amorphic and no boundaries. It's not just God when everything is really harsh and strong. I mean, it's the Lord God, it's, a, it's an indication. And then Ezekiel is coming with, uh, with this humility, uh, you knew. Now let's pay attention to the fact that Ezekiel is not being named in his name. God is addressing Ezekiel by the expression Son of Man. Son of man. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel is without a name here. Why? Because he's out of himself. The whole thing with, his, with the bones is the self. 
Ezekiel mm-hmm. is becoming part of the message by not having a self at that point. And that he's a son of man. He's a, there is a general expression, son of man. But ben Adam. Ben Adam, mm-hmm. yeah, son of man. Human right. being. He's, he's selfless. In order to be able to, to bring this vision forth, mm-hmm. to bring it forth, yeah. Mm-hmm. To bring it, to bring it uh, forth, to pass it on, he needs to become part of the, of the prophecy. Right. So by, by being called son of man, he's being taken away the self, which helps us understand the whole thing with the bones being self. Right. Okay? And, the, and, and maybe that would understand, help us understand whose bones were they. People who were self-centered. They left Egypt, they left, they ran away from Egypt before it was time to be redeemed. They rushed, they wanted to rush, the they wanted to rush the process for themselves, not for the people, because otherwise they would have a master plan for everybody to run away. Mm. But they ran for themselves. Okay, it's, it's a very strong message. Mm. Uh, and then, you knew. Okay, verse 4. Um, you knew, you know. You knew. Is that, is, is, no, you knew. Okay, you knew. I mean, you know, you you have the answer before you before you ask the question. Right. You knew it before you you, you asked it. Okay, you knew. Again, he said to me, "Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones: Surely I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live." Mm-hmm. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, so so what is the vision about? Um, about, about life, about God breathing. Okay, life. we know that Ezekiel is receiving the vision in yes. Babylon. Yes. Right? He's in, he's in a state, of, he's in exile. Yes. The nation is in exile. Right. Ezekiel is every day. Ezekiel is in Babylon, and he's seeing more and more people come from the long journey from the land of Israel, coming into. There weren't any cars, so there was. They, they had. It was like a death march. They had to walk mm. all the way with the security guys. So they were walking. They're coming, coming every day. People are coming with you know desperate, crying, l- feeling lost, mourning. Mm. How can all all the negativity that you can even, that you can possibly think of, and and out of that he's receiving he's receiving this. So so first of all, the initial understanding God is talking to just as uh, God uh, did with Ezekiel twenty four with his wife and in other places as well. I'm just get, just took it as an example. Um, we see, we can say that this is about the uh, uh, re- revival mm-hmm. revival of the nation, right. the nation coming back to life. Very, very dry bones, there is no chance. Even when you think that there is no chance and it's lost and you will never be able to do it, da, 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 God is bringing the bones to life. Just like, okay? So against all odds. But, but, if this were the case, we could say that this belonged to the past only. We need this to be relevant at all times. Also, also in our generation, also today, right. today. So you know, Zionist movement, uh, who wasn't uh, formally, who wasn't uh, led by religious people, uh, but Zionist movement, which basically came about at the end of the 1800s by uh, Theodore Her- Herzl, uh, they really took this vision, not being religious. They knew about Bible, of course, they knew Bible and everything, but they weren't religious. They took this vision and they said, we are going to bring the dry bones. I mean, we're going to do it again. Okay, this will will happen in our time. They actually said that. Like, they actually... It's a vision associated with the establishment of the State of Israel. Uh, We read this vision on Day of Independence Mm -hmm. every year at the synagogue. We read uh, read about it. It's a very strong message message about revival. Okay, coming back to life. Which is true, we can't deny it, it is true. Because he says, these, uh, he says in verse 11, these bones are all the congregation of Israel. Mm-hmm. Right? And, so, and go on. Uh, I can't translate more than that, I'm reading from the Hebrew. Yeah, which verse are you reading? Verse 11. Reading. Verse 11. Yeah, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are 
cut off? What's the translation for cut off? Nigzanu lanu. Like we are doomed. Doomed. It's basically doomed. We got a we, we got a bad verdict here. Mm. Okay, we can't do anything about it. Right. Okay. That's uh, 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 that that's one interpretation. Right. But but uh, what 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 do we do with the rest of the verse? Continue reading. Therefore, verse verse twelve. I mean. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I've opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it. And performed it, says the Lord. Okay, I'm I'm opening your graves now. This message is being is being given to who? Living people. So what what is the grave? I mean, what do you mean? What what is what what is God in, God into? I'm opening your grave. Maybe the place where you could it be he talking of he's talking about what you feel is dead. What's what's gone? What's that's no hope left for being up. So, so really even even you feel life. that you even if you feel that you're under the grave, from even from that place, I can op- I can I can I can ta- I can give you salvation. Mm-hmm. I can I can redeem you from that place, right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's definitely one understanding. Another understanding is that well, it does, does, there is no contradiction between them. But another understanding is that Ezekiel, this prophecy is also about a resurrection of the dead mm-hmm. in future redemption. Mm-hmm. That God is saying, I mean, it's not just about 1948, or it's right. not just about it's not just about 70 years after Ezekiel when King Cyrus is is making Cyrus' declaration, saying all the Jews can return to the land of Judah and rebuild the temple. Mm-hmm. It's not just about that. It's not just about 1948. It also talks about hopefully 2019. Actually. Mm-hmm. October 31st, 2019, mm-hmm. hopefully, uh, when, 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 when future redemption, when, when, rede- when the gradual redemption is basically coming to, to its final stage, and, and, there is, and, and God is saying, when this happens, I will even raise, there, there, is, there is going to be something with the dead, with the dead people, mm. resurrection of the dead. Now, we're not quite, there isn't a one clear understanding about whether or not when redemption is finished and God's kingdom is returning and his manifest presence is returning to the mountain, will then dead people will be resurrected and <coughs> live? Okay, and continue to live and maybe we would all be immortal or something like that. Or maybe they would just be re- just just be resurrected. They would see God's glory returning to Zion and go back go back to the grave and, and we will continue to live mortal life ordinary life but much more spiritual mm-hmm. so there is this approach and there is that approach with a lot of evidence to support that and that we're, we're not really really sure the thing is that I can just say in, in brackets and as you know my, our brackets here are quite long <coughs> uh, 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 in brackets we can say that um, it doesn't okay so you know we might be we, not, we might let's say go into the discussion of who is right Right? I mean, who is right? So, so is it this case or that case? The, the answer is, or not the answer, but like my take would be, what difference does it make? What difference does it make for me, Gil, mm-hmm. little Gil, in 2019, 25-year-old, years old, <laughs> uh, 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 um, what difference does it make for me to know whether or not my grandparents will be resurrected for one day or for a month or forever. What, in what way does it bring me any closer to God? And the answer is, it, for me, it doesn't. It doesn't help me become a better Jew. It doesn't help me become more committed to God. Because if it's the case that, that they're, going, that they're going to be resurrected, my grandparents, and live forever, if that makes me more committed to God than them being resurrected and then going back to the grave, then I have a problem with my commitment. My commitment is conditioned. Mm-hmm. And, and our commitment in our practical lives with, with the Creator should be unconditioned. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter 
sorry? Unconditional. Unconditional. Uh, it doesn't matter if you choose to do it this way or you choose to do it that way or maybe you choose in a third way that I'm not even aware of right now mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm very limited in my thinking, all of us, mm -hmm. some more, some less. Uh, but, but, okay, that's, that, that's, that's the thing. That we are not, uh, Jewish people uh, don't quite often step into the romantic part, view uh, 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 of scriptures. So, so, so what will it look like? Mm. What would it look like, you know, when Mashiach comes? Right. And, and, and will we uh, hover in the air? Mm. Or will we wear togs? Or togas. will we yeah, togas yeah. And, or, or continue to... I mean, what's gonna... Uh, what, uh, what, of course it's interesting. Of course we have to have this image, this picture in front of our eyes all the time because it helps us, it gives us encouragement like to go on or there is, there, there is you know... Mm. But, 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 but really? It doesn't change. We were created not to deal with these details. I'm saying as a Jewish as a Jewish person, we were created to bring that picture closer, not necessarily understand it. And my way to bring it closer, to make it to make to make it be fulfilled, is with my commitment. Is with me keeping his 613 or whatever number that I have left, because we don't. He's not yet allowing us to live in 613 commands. One of the commands is to bring sacrifices. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. One of the commands is to, you know, to do all the, uh, are involved with, with, uh, with, with high priests and, 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 cor and, uh, and, and qualified Levites, and we don't have that. So I'm, I'm doing what I, what I have left, which is quite a lot, and, and trying to keep my focus on him and the practical side of things that I was given, and, and all the rest is in his hands. It's a declaration. You have it all in your hands. I'm not going to interfere in your calculations. Mm. I can only be who I was called to be. When I go, after 120 years, which is in 100 years from now, uh, when, I go, when, I, when I die and I, go to, uh, and, I, and I stand before and I stand before him, not in my body, but my soul will return to its original flame, it will be asked, it won't be asked why weren't you like Moses? Why weren't you like Ezekiel? Why weren't you like King David? It would be asked, why weren't you Gil? The way you were created. Each and every one of us, we have our, special, we have our unique, special, personal gifts and, and, and plan that God has for us. I can't be a professional musician. I can't bring people closer to God through my unexisting violin. I can't do that. I can't. Hardly with the guitar and the drum. And uh, it, I have other ways, though. Mm -hmm. You have your ways. Each and, every, each and every person has his ways to, 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 to fulfill what God has for him. We were given, like a, we, we call it like a, like a box of tools. Mm -hmm. We have our, and the tools are different inside of the box. Some boxes are bigger, some boxes are smaller. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, but yet we were given exactly what we need in order to deal with what God, God has for us. And, and, and at 120, when our soul reaches, goes back to its original flame, that's the question it would be asked. Were you Gil? Were you really, really Gil? Did you maximize Everything that I've given you, did you use every tool in the box mm -hmm. that I've given you in order to fulfill your destiny? That's the question. I can't be Moses, I can't be Joshua, I, and I don't want to be. I don't want to be. I'm happy, I should be happy, the way I was created, with what I was given, and through that to find my way back to him. So all these questions of, of was it a physical thing? Was it just a vision? Uh, 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 is it about the, the, the establishment, the reestablishment of the nation? Is it about uh, 1940? Is it about the resurrection of the dead in, in future redemption to come? Is it all these things? Uh, we might have a, an idea, but, and we have to have an idea because we're not just, you know, we, we, we're not robots. Right. Yet that's not going to be the main focus of our relationship with Him. Okay, but let's. Do you have a question? Well, I do, but maybe you were going there. Are you going? I, we're going I, back to the verses. Oh, okay. Where are we going back to? Good question. Um, <laughs> eh, oh, sinews. 
uh, and I prophesied. Verse seven. Verse seven. Yeah. So, by the way, we see here another 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 message of partnership. I mean, God is inviting son of man. Mm -hmm. By the way, son of Adam. That's mm -hmm. it's like saying son of man. And if we think about Adam in Genesis, right. as we spoke about uh, last night, if we think about Adam in Genesis. Uh, being given the task to name all the living creatures by the, he was the one giving them their names he called he named the lion or he named him in Hebrew but uh, but but you know then it was trying to, but, but he gave the names to the living creatures we can see that in Genesis 2 yeah. Adam sat there and okay so all the animals came before him okay you're gonna be that you're gonna be that you're gonna be that you're gonna be that and as he was doing that he was looking for a partner to himself and then he became sad because no partner was found and then the woman was created. Okay, we talked about that mm -hmm. for exactly what, what, what was going on there. Right. But, um, but, 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 but here the son of Adam, being, being son of man, son of mm -hmm. Adam, it's the same, 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 same in Hebrew, son of Adam is now invited to partner with God again. Mm -hmm. God says, okay, prophesy. Now what happened if, if Ezekiel refused? Would the vision not exist? I mean, of course. I mean, you know, God doesn't need Ezekiel to prophesy, right? Okay, but God, God is inviting Ezekiel to prophesy because Ezekiel needs that. We need Ezekiel to do that, right. so that we understand that we have the ability to partner with him, and to, to do. Uh, he's leaving us some work to do. Right. That's that's the thing. Right. So verse seven. Verse seven. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over. But there was no breath in them. Again, this brings me really to the point of um, thinking, asking again the question. We, we talked about it in one way. But again, thinking about the bones. Mm -hmm. I mean, why not uh, skin tissues? Mm -hmm. Why not muscles? Placentas, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I mean, why why not all of that? All right. Why not why the bones? Okay, so we said bone is the self, and it kind of it, it talks about that's all fine. But another idea, another another approach that we have is that there is a picture here of a think about like a, a body mm. being being un, being stripped yeah, and then being dressed up again, yeah. and and God is show and, and then being and. And, and, then, and then being stripped again, because there is the question, so what happened with these people? Mm -hmm. There were living people in the valley. What happened to them? They, they went, they, they died again? Or what, what happened with mm -hmm. them? There was a whole discussion in the Jewish Talmud, what happened with these people? Some say, some rabbis say, they, they were given life, they were given breath, in order to, uh, they gave a word of praise, and they went back to death. Uh, one rabbi says in the Jewish Talmud, again, I'm just sharing the opinions of what, what mm -hmm. was happening there. This is like uh, uh, 2,000 years ago. Uh, and one rabbi says that they continued to live, and he said, uh, uh, my, uh, our ancest an ancestors, mm -hmm. I mean, our bloodline came from one of those people, and we have a tefillin in our family that belonged to one of the... Well, that, that's, okay. that's going with the um, interpretation that this actually happened. That this actually happened, yes. Yeah. yes. Otherwise, it's a picture of, of us, course, of course. course. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Of course, those who say, no, it's a, vis it's a vision per that se... That question doesn't even No, it doesn't even exist. exist. Yes. No, of course right. not. Okay, good. Um, so, the thing about the bones is that there is a picture here of something being done, and then there is a process which is redone and redone and redone. Yes. So they wear it, they take it off, they yes. wear it, they take it off. God is signaling, this is, a how life, this is how I run the world. Don't try to look answers in every generation. New answers, new ways to get out of situations. The situations you're facing is in the scriptures. Just look for it and understand what you need to do about it. That's a message for... Boris Johnson, okay, <laughs> for example, with Brexit. Brexit existed in this, no, but uh, uh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, we're not getting into that, we're not, but no, not really, but, but really the message is, 
look for answers inside. Nothing there is no, in Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. There is no nothing in nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's all the same. All the same. Different I mean same thing, different wrapping. Okay, so now we experience it, we call it this, back then it was that. And look for what I, what I said in the scriptures, and, yes. and, and, and then you would know what to do. So there, there is this picture of, you know, being, and this would not have been, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the thing about the bones, the bones are the part that is being dressed, I mean, you wrap it, right, with right. the sinews and the muscles and the skin and everything, and then you, un and then you, you take, and then, yeah. and then you strip it again, and you're yeah. left with the self thing, like with the... Yeah. With the base. Yes. So verse okay. Nine? Verse nine. Yeah. This is a bit not really. Okay. Can he's breath for the four. Uh -huh. Yeah. So okay. Also, he's this. This is the bit that talks about the role of the nations, isn't it? Go on. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds of breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Okay, now, uh, we can, we can, we, it came from the four winds, right? And it says that, it also says that the, the, the valley was full of bones. So basically the whole thing was full, right? There was a valley full of bones. They were scattered all over the valley. And the breath also came from every possible direction, mm -hmm. from the four winds. And that's a picture of, uh, of what God is talking about in, in Torah, about the, the return, I mean, the, um, what we call a gathering up exiles. Mm. Okay, so it's a picture of even if you are, God says in Exodus, uh, just before Mount Sinai event, we can read that. Okay, let's go there quickly. Running, Exodus. Um, yeah, it's the whole introduction to Ten Commandments. Um, to 19. Uh, here, 19, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. about? The beginning. In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. For they had departed from Rephidim and had come to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the Lord. And Moses went up to God. And the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Okay. So, there is something here about being brought up. Mm -hmm. being gathered being gathered up uh, there is a, when when we read about 10 commandments again in Deuteronomy right in Deuteronomy uh, 4 okay in Deuteronomy 4 God is saying um, uh, uh, I will bring you from the far end okay, I'm really bad I'm probably translating it the wrong way okay. Which verse? Um, I'm getting there right now. Wait a minute. Okay, I'll look it up in a minute. I'll open my phone. Just not with me. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, he's saying like, I will bring you from the far end, even even the most distant, distant place in heaven. For in uh, I will bring you from that place. Mm -hmm. And the picture that Ezekiel is having with the valley in the valley is exactly that they're coming from every possible direction. The bones. And then also the spirit, the breath, which is being given to them. So the breath comes into them, but it, it's um, my what I've sort of been getting from this is that um, God says to prophesy to the breath, and it says, "Come from the four winds of breath." So mm -hmm. who who is the breath that's prophesy? Who's the breath that's prophesying? Because it's saying, "Say to the breath." Mm -hmm. Come from the, the four winds of breath. Yeah. So, like, we're, we're talking to the breath. Yeah. To ruach. Come. It's the ruach. word ruach, yeah. it's spirit. Yes. 
spirit or breath, so, you say. And breathe on these. Mm -hmm. So there's this action happening. And so my sort of sense is, okay, so these four winds are from all it's not four, four it's like It's like the breath is coming from four winds. The spirit of God is coming from four winds. Yes. And it's being inserted... It's it's basically it breathes life into the into the, into the, the dead people right. standing there. So who who is who is prophesying this? Uh, Ezekiel. Who, with the four winds. No, is, 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 is this, God is, is saying. Look, look at verse nine. God, he said, and and God said to me, prophesy to the wind mm -hmm. or the spirit. It's the yes. same word. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, prophesy to the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and you should say to the wind or to the spirit, mm -hmm. okay, or to breath. It's the same word yes. in Hebrew. Thus saith the Lord. Ta -da -da -da. So Ezekiel is com commanding, he's prophesying to the wind, come and do this. Come from the four winds. Come, come from, from the, the four, four winds, winds and do it. Breath and okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just, I'm just kind of wondering if you, when you talk, think about the four winds, you think about the four, the four corners of the earth, as it were. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, is this? <laughs> so the earth has corners, but right. anyway, um, you know the world is round, right? <laughs> yeah. the, the news came it's to flat. the, the news. The news came to no, you, it's right? Flat. Oh, it's flat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and um, but is this a picture somehow of the nations? The coming, nations the, the, coming to the, to, to, to the, the picture the for the nations is actually the graves. When God says, "I will open your graves." You said the grave is the place with no hope, the place I'm stuck in. Mm. And the, for us, the picture of the, the nations are actually the graves. And God says, I will open, I will bring you from your graves. Mm. You have life only in, this, in the land that I promised Abraham. You, only, you are called alive right. when you're here. Prophets can, be prof can, can prophesy when they're on the land. When they're in the land, that's when I'm giving them the prophecy. Okay. Ezekiel is an exception because so, it's about returning to the land. So you remember when I came to you, when you know, and I was asking myself, what, you know, why didn't Ezekiel prophesy this last part of the of, of the vision, mm -hmm. what God gave him to prophesy? Mm -hmm. um, really interested to hear again what you what you feel about that. What, because I, I, what I remember was that you, you said, well, maybe this is the time, this is for the time of the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. um, e either or, according to either understanding, this has not yet, this w hasn't, hasn't yet been fulfilled. Yeah. I mean, even today, you have a lot of Jews living outside of the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. the, according to Ezekiel, in Ezekiel's terms, they are still stuck in the grave. Mm -hmm. They're still there. And right. God is still to open, he still needs to open their graves and bring them out from their graves mm -hmm. to the land. Right. And give them life. Yes. Yet to happen. Yes. If we take the other approach, saying that this is about the resurrection of the dead, etc., etc., same thing. Right. Hasn't yet happened. I mean, Ezekiel could not have prophesied that. This is, uh, this is uh, yet to come. So either way, we're going on, we're going in the same path. It's like two parallel, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, understandings. So if I was to if I was to ask you, if I were to ask you, if I were to ask you, thank you. <laughs> um, what um, what would you say that this that that this uh, vision of Ezekiel? What would you say is its significance? Its relevance? To, to the nations, to us, non-Jewish. What's our, do we have a role in this? It, it, the, it's, I would no. say, I would say it's all of, I, I would say it's about the nations just as it's about, it's about the people. I mean, what is the, 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 what is the point in all of this? Why should the people return to the land? Why? Why shouldn't they stay where it's far more comfortable? Okay, far less humid and hot in the summer. Okay, much more water. Okay, better jobs maybe. Why shouldn't they stay there? Why? Because they have another mission. You don't just live your early life, as Leah was talking about yesterday. Mm -hmm. You have a calling. You have to live here. Why do we need to live here? We would ask. Okay, so why do we? Because we have to bring the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is about the three-piece puzzle. People, 
land, word. We talked about that, right? Mm -hmm. The people, land, world. It has to be together. We have to have the people as a people. And we talked about that. What is the people of Israel? What is it like? What is the experience? We've been to Yad Vashem. We saw an attempt of what we saw what can happen when in time of extinction and things like we so what is the people talking about what is what is the significance of the land? They have to be together. But they have to have the word of God being kept in this. Mm. So three people. Now, now we should say, why do we need that? Okay, so why do we need that? We need that in order for the kingdom of God to return in Jewish perspective. Okay, right. and then you should ask, why do we need the kingdom of God? Why? Because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is why. Mm. Because he created the world. It's his world. He has a plan. He has a plan. He, from the first place, the plan, not like he changes mind, but be with me, but from the first place, for 2,000 years, there hasn't been Jews around. Right. There haven't been Jews around. Okay? There, it didn't start with a Jewish nation. It started with a Hebrew man, with Abraham. The nation came two, two, 2,500 years after the creation of the world. Can you imagine? 2,500 years, there hasn't been a chosen nation. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was only then that was the time. The God's plan was for humanity to be the kingdom of God. But as we read in Genesis, it, God saw man's evil inclination and he his heart was filled with pain. So a new plan had to be to, a new plan had to be made. Okay, you understand? Uh, it's only language that we can understand. Of course, mm -hmm. he knew the he knew he knows the beginning, he knows the end, it's important to say, but a new plan had to be made. And then the Jewish, and then a new bloodline began to evolve, and they would be the screen. They would bring my kingdom to the world because the entire humanity didn't work for two thousand years. We needed for that. Now the kingdom of God is it for the Jewish people only? No, 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 no. The kingdom of God is for the world. It, he created the world. He didn't just create the land of Israel. He created the world. He created you, and he created me. A Jew and a non-Jew, okay? He created everybody. He is the God of Southeast Asia and South America and Australia and North Africa. You name it. He is the God of the world. We are just the, we're just the screen on which he should project himself to the world. His house is a house of prayer to all nations, not just the Jewish people. It's, I'm saying this because it's, it frustrates me that many of my own people don't realize that. Mm. And, it, and that pushes away the fulfillment of the vision, of, 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 of the ultimate reality we need to live in. It pushes it away, like the rabbi I was telling you about, who said, yeah, you can go spend Shabbat with this group, but ask your brother, why does he need them? What do you mean, why do I need them? We need you because it's about you. You are the audience on display that King Solomon is describing with the groom and the bride. Da, 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 da. I mean, Moses is saying to God, what would, the world, what would the nations say? That you've taken them out of Egypt to annihilate them in the desert? That's what you want that the, the nations would say about you? Clearly the opinion and the knowledge of the nations about the Creator, that's what's important. So why, 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 why? We get to in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That's the. That's all we have to understand. Mm, that's awesome. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much, Gil. There's, really there's, really awesome. there's nothing to be. There's nothing to be. Good stuff. Okay. We need to talk about the kingdom. Do you want to finish the recording? Yes. I think I your phone is about to. I'm going to finish. No, it's not. <laughs>